What's going on Jets fans? Happy Monday. Maybe not as happy of a Monday. A couple of negative things on the timeline this morning, but nothing to panic about a ton in my opinion. Number one, Quinn and Williams and the contract extension. Rich Mini reporting last week that the two sides are still pretty far apart um, in terms, which is a little surprising because it seems like the market has been set. With all the defensive tackles who have been extended in this cycle, it doesn't seem like the Jets could really ask for much less or Quinnen could ask for much more than those guys have gotten. And it's hard to give a perspective on like whose side you're on, right? When you don't know what the offer is. Are the Jets lowballing Quinnen Williams? I find that hard to believe. Is Quinnen Williams asking, really asking for Aaron Donald money? That'd be shocking. So it's probably just over guarantees and I have faith it's going to get done. I think we saw the same kind of panic with the Aaron Rodgers situation. Just get it done. Come on. We're going to mess it up. The 49ers are going to... And it got done. And then the ironic part is a lot, oftentimes then when it does get done, we kind of complain that we overpaid like we saw with the Aaron Rodgers trade. So you have to kind of pick pick a side. Patience or being willing to maybe meet uh, the price of Quinn Williams that may be above what really is his market value. I would be comfortable paying him slightly more than all of the defensive tackles that got paid this offseason because I do think he is the best out of the bunch. He certainly had the best season. Now with Quinnen, let's also be honest in the fact that this was his only excellent season. Only one. Now I do think the trajectory is pointing up. I do think he will be an all-pro caliber player you know, for the next four, five, six seasons, but that is a factor and that is brought up in contract negotiations. Um, he was a rookie, whatever, you get a pass for that. His second year, he was excellent. In 2020, even though he didn't have a lot of sack numbers, he was great if you watch the games. And then year three, he was kind of injured and it was disappointing. Last year, he explodes. So that you will have to factor that in to the contract negotiations. And he also did the old un, old fashioned uh, unfollow the Jets on Twitter and take the Jets out of his bio. Now it says defensive tackle for dot, 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 where I used to say defensive tackle for the Jets. And maybe it makes me sound kind of old and lame, but I do think that's a little petty when the athletes do that. Now, I'm the one making a video about it, so only so much I can complain about that. I do think a deal will get done. The, the market's there. The market is there. How much more or less could either side really be asking for in this situation? And I think it's just going to be a story until it's done, but it'll be done. I'm confident that Quinn and Williams will be a Jet. Wasn't panicking about Aaron Rodgers. I'm not going to start panicking now. Now, the other news is Quan Alexander, who's still a free agent, the Jets said they were keeping open lines of communication with the free agent linebacker, is visiting with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Feels like the past two or three off seasons, the Steelers have uh, nabbed a couple of free agents that we've uh, been interested in, right? Last year was Larry Ogunjobi. Um, I do really think that we would miss Quan Alexander. I know he's not technically a starter because we run so much nickel. And he wasn't making a lot of money, but I don't I don't see that third linebacker on this roster that could come in and have the kind of impact that he had. He did play 49%, so half the snaps. And you also have to remember Quincy and CJ Mosley, for the most part, were very durable. Combined, they only missed uh three games. So on defense, we were really healthy last year. And if that regresses to the mean, you could need Quan Alexander more. Maybe the Jets like a young linebacker in that room that you know we don't know about. Maybe it's Jamie and Sherwood, who they think could take some some reps at will if needed. Maybe they do see either Jordan Whitehead or Chuck Clark playing in the box more in a three safety set with Tony Adams being free safety. That's something I've talked about before. But I don't like any of that as much as I just like the simple solution of paying Quan Alexander three million bucks you know, to come be our third linebacker again. I think we would miss him. I think the bang for the your buck of a Quan signing, even if you triple his salary from last year, um, would be worth it. Now, you have to, have to consider the fact that maybe Quan Alexander is seeking a, a spot where he has more immediate access to playing time and a starting role. There are teams in the NFL, particularly teams that run more three linebacker sets, where he would be uh, a starter. And maybe Pittsburgh is that team. I don't know their depth chart off the top of my head well enough to know. But it kind of reminds me of when we lost Morgan Moses and people were saying, we let Morgan Moses walk. It's like, well, no, we couldn't offer Morgan Moses a, a realistic shot to be a starter. Um, and the Baltimore Ravens could. And that was the end of that. So maybe it's that same type of situation. So if the Jets offer Quan Alexander uh, market value and he takes 
you know, a starting job in Pittsburgh, there's only so much you can do. It's not mad in franchise mode. These guys have a say as well. But I would offer Con Quan a contract. And yeah, I'd be willing to go north of what Simmons and company and Dexter Lawrence got to lock up Quinn and Williams. He was the most important member of that defense last year. But not going to panic a ton on either. Have a great Monday. Go Jets.